A friend of a friend had a baby monitor type thing and it came with this power supply. And he was a bit concerned because the LED in it was flickering on and off and it was uh, making some noises. And uh, he was a bit concerned, which is reasonable enough if you have this in the same room as your baby. So the, he got in touch with the manufacturer and they send a replacement. Not sure what uh, brand it is. This certainly says Danello Power. Now, before I go any further this video, I just want to thank whoever has been sending me Scotty Dog, shortbread Scotty Dogs via Amazon. Uh, I just want to thank them for that and also mention that for those of you who have noticed my uh, quick test unit, there's someone in America is now selling these on eBay. And if you do a search on eBay for Cliff Quick Test in US Canada wire colours, you will find it. Uh, the seller is called AJ McCowan. So um, uh, I'll spell that out, A-J-M-C-K-E-O-W-N. So uh, you can buy them uh, on ebay.com in the appropriate colours now, which is good. Um, so getting back to the power supply, I decided to give it a test. This is a generic sort of, it, since it's putting out six volts at two amps, I used a USB tester. This is a, a, one of the larger ones with the sort of the uh, coarse and fine controls that you can set the test current with. And I set it for about two amps. I mean, it does say two amps. And it got quite hot and then it died. So um, it didn't uh, do anything weird in that time other than getting quite hot and then dying, which is pretty weird in its own right. So I think it's time to open this up and I'm guessing, I can feel under here, there's a, what feels like a screw. So let's get the label off and see if there is a screw under there. It might just be a plastic moulding indent. No, there's a screw. That's good. So let's get a screwdriver and pop this open and see what's inside. See if it's failed in an obvious manner. Or if, and also check out what the isolation is like. Because once again, if this is a sort of product you're going to have in a children's bedroom... You want it to be relatively safe-ish. So what am I seeing here? What about the isolation? The isolation, they've made a modest attempt at isolation. I'll bring this up and I shall focus on it up here. So they've made a modest attempt at isolation. Um, there's no saying the transformer is very wonky. This capacitor is not acceptable. Um, it's not, it's certainly the right color, but it's not the size that I'd normally associate with a proper class Y capacitor. So that aspect of it is a bit of a fail. Um, let's see if we can find what's gone wrong with this. So uh, I'm just going to focus back down into an area where you can actually see anything. I'm going to use this cheat card. This is also a good reason, uh, a good time to mention how autofocus works. Now, what I'm using here is a test uh, printed circuit board layout, and it's got lots of sharply defined black and grey lines. And if I focus it down to, say, the bench here, uh, and then I raise it up. Then at the at the bench level, it's got a very sharp contrast between the black and white. And this is how autofocus works with digital cameras, because it looks for the comparison of of the intensity variation between adjacent pixels. And if I bring it up, it becomes grayer and grayer and fuzzier. The definition between the uh, black and the white. So. If I refocus it, it's going to look for that sharp contrast and it's going to find it. That's how autofocus works. So let's bring it back down to here again. And uh, bring the meter in and start metering things out and see why this actually failed there. Um, as I say, I, I regard this the fact that this power supply, although it looks like it's making a decent effort, this class Y capacitor is just not really uh, up to the standard I'd really want on a product like that. Uh, especially in a, a situation where, you know, children could sort of interfere with the equipment. The transformer is also at a very jaunty angle in here. It's not sat down properly onto the printed circuit board. That may possibly be a factor between the, the odd behaviour. Uh, so let's uh, do some tests. There's a fuse here. Let's see if the fuse is intact. Let's put this round to continuity. Fuse is intact. What about the the components are all just staggered at different heights here? It looks like it's been a very lazy assembly of this circuit board. Um, so I'd say the heat all seemed to be concentrated in the output near the transformer. I'm wondering if this diode has failed, because it's a, a fairly common scenario for these diodes to fail. So let's see if that diode has gone short circuit. 
Yeah, that diode's gone short circuit. That's the bit that's really suffered with the heat by the look of it. Uh, I'm going to uh, desolder that now and check it, check it out. OK, I've had a closer look at this, and it turns out there were some dry joints in this circuit board, including a quite important one. It was the primary winding uh, where it connects to the positive of the supply. So if that was providing intermittent connection, it would have, uh, prov you know, it would have created that, what was described, this sort of arcing and intermittent sort of nature. It's really odd. That it looks as though they've kind of made an effort to make a decent quality power supply here. They've got an actual fuse, a, a kind of undersized fuse. They've got a com mode suppression choke. They've got the uh, the little spark gaps uh, on associated with that underneath it. It's a typical, it's a, based on a switch mode chip in here with uh, the reservoir capacitor here after the bridge rectifier, which has got the wonky diodes. It's got the usual, uh, it's got optoisolation feedback, but it's also got the uh, capacitor and diode associated with the um, feedback winding from the transformer to actually power the chip, the sort of bootstrap circuit. Um, and in the output, it's got a couple of stages of filtering. It's got the rectifier diode. I have changed that diode because this one is absolutely dead. I've changed it for a one amp diode because that's all I had. Uh, you can't use an ordinary diode in these. It has to be a high speed diode because obviously the output of this switch mode power supply is at very high frequency. So it has to have a fast recovery time. And if you used an ordinary diode, it would either just not really work or it would get quite hot. So I've used a 1N4007UF, which is just what I had. UF standing for ultra fast, I believe. And the other uh, element of this circuitry, it's got the uh, smoothing capacitor, an inductor and a smoothing capacitor, so it's got a bit of filtering in the output. And then for the uh, feedback, it's a very simple circuit. It's got the little Zener diode uh, driving the opto isolator. So just to show you uh, that this is dead, normally if I put the meter to continuity and connected the positive to the band end and the negative to the uh, other end, it should normally be an open circuit, but it's a dead short. Likewise, if it was connected with the positive to the opposite to the band end, the band end to the negative, uh, it should normally show about 0.6, but in this case, it is, it's gone dead short. And that must have been while I was testing it. So let's put it back together with that one amp diode and just see if it actually works. This isn't going to get you reused. It's not suitable for reuse. It's not a good quality of power supply. It's a kind of attempt at a good quality of power supply that just didn't quite go there. Uh, so let's uh, clip this case on again. And put that screw back in and then plug it in and see what happens. This is where it could actually go bang. All I'm wanting here is for this display. Do I have a better display here? Yeah, I've got this one, which is brighter. It's more visible. All I want to see is, if I have fixed it by changing that diode, is that the red LED on this display will light up. Uh, if I've not fixed it, it won't work, and it might actually go bang. It might actually detonate quite forcefully. Let's uh, plug it in and find out. And it's back. But still not, you know, I still wouldn't use it. That, so that was the bit that had failed was the diode, and it's obviously got protection, the uh, driver chip, to protect against uh, a shorted output. But yeah, uh, would if I had a kid, which I don't have a kid, never going to have a kid, uh, would I have one of these power supplies in the kid's bedroom and an appliance? Uh, the answer is probably, I don't think it's good enough, to be honest. I'd be wanting to go and find another better quality um, 6 volt power supply with a standard jack in it and use that instead 6 volts 2 amps so um, yeah but it was interesting enough to take a look at and uh, interesting to see the failure mode is once again the diode they, the diodes always fail in these power supplies it's so it's such a common fault